I go into my son's bedroom and I say, sweetie, I'm just going to go downstairs and do a booktube video. No reply. Sweetie, sweetie, I'm just going to go downstairs and record my March wrap up. I'm going to go and do a booktube video. Still no reply. Sweetie, I'm just going to, yes, fine. Okay, mummy. I come downstairs, I get set up, I get myself a little fruity number, hear him coming down the stairs, he opens up the door, oh are you doing a video? Right there, that's my life. No, doing a video? No, what gave you that impression? Lights on in the middle of day, me sitting talking to the screen, stack of books next to me, no, not in a video, no because I would have told you if I was doing a video. Anyway, hello booktube, it's Louise the Big Head Bookworm, lovely to see you, hope you are well. So I am here with some books that I read in March, um, there are some planes going overhead but I don't think you'll be able to hear them, or if you can. Oh look, there are some planes going overhead, that's fun. Um, parish Notices, the booktuber that I would love you to go over and say hello to is Emily from Possibly Literate. So that's Emily from Possibly Literate. I will leave her information, I'll leave her channel name in the description box of this video. I've only just recently found Emily myself, but I've really liked her videos. She seems to only do adult books. Um, it's just really good. I really enjoy watching them. She's got a lovely vibe about her. So if you do go over and subscribe, please say hello from me, Louise, the big head bookworm, and give her my love. That would be lovely. Um, the other parish notice is that the Easter Bring and Buy is on this Saturday, not the following Saturday. It's on this Saturday. Um, if you want to bring doors open from 8. If you want to browse, the doors will be open for you at 9.15 and then buying and pouncing on those bargains is at 9.30. So bringing is at 8, browsing is at 9.15 and pouncing is on at 9.30. Also somebody, um, one or two people have been asking about the quiz teams for the quiz night. Yes, Marjorie is working on them. Yes, I, I do realise. And I know I completely agree with what you said about Gordon. It, it, it is it is awkward, though, with Gordon being Marjorie's husband. Um, I did try to say something, but it's it's just hard. It's just hard. I mean, she does so much. She does so much. And, and you know, there he is, you know, making those comments. And I agree with you. It, it, they're just not called for, but... It, do, it does make it tricky. But anyway, she is working on the, the teams and as soon as she's organised it, she'll be contacting everybody. Right, there we go. Let's move on. So, March, better than I expected. First of all, I whipped through a J.D. Robb's Witness in Death. This is number... Uh, of her... What is it? About number 10. Number 9 or number 10 of her In Death series. It's just a reread. I picked it up. Um... That was great. I enjoyed them. Um, I also read, which you know about because I did this in a previous wrap up, but I actually read it at the beginning of March, um, Siddhartha by Herman Hess and A Time to Keep Silence by Patrick Lee Fermer. Both very, very slim. Um, that is three essays about when Patrick Lee Fermer spent some time in three well, two monasteries, and then he visits another monastery from the 1950s. Beautiful, beautiful writing. And um, Siddhartha's from the 1920s. Oh, it's powerful. Powerful about Buddhist principles and just glorious. Love them both. Uh, another non-fiction that I read this month was Smoke Gets in Gets in Your Eyes by Caitlin Doherty. It was um, around quite a bit last year in, in Booktube. Well, that's where I saw it. And Caitlin Do Doherty has a YouTube channel called Ask a Mortician. She is an alternative LA mortician. Um, and this is really about her, how she got into the death industry and about the practices of the death in industry. She is a um, advocate for a good death and about knowing what happens when you die and what happens with a, a body so that you can make choices for yourself and your family. Um, 
I have never been fearful about dead bodies or dealing with dead bodies and I have been very open for many many years as to what I want to happen with me and have had the conversations, had a conversation with my mum and dad when I was much younger about what I wanted which was a natural burial so I don't want a casket or a, a coffin, I just want to be put in a shroud. Um, I know the nearest cemetery that does that, that you can go and have just a woodland burial as it's called in the UK. I, you know, have said it for years, it's a living, I have a living testament about that. Um, so that, that side of it wasn't frightening to me. It's amazing how she speaks about the fear of death nowadays, about how we're frightened of dead bodies. Um, my, as you, as you may know, if you watch, if you've watched this channel for a while, my mum died in January and I did sit with her. As, as a form of observance and it was as part of my grieving process was it was to continue with her because that was still my mum it was it, it it and it wasn't frightening it, it isn't frightening take it from me from somebody that has gone through it and gone through it very recently it is utterly profound and beautiful and um I wondered whether it was too soon to read this book um but it wasn't because it it talks about how we have such a fear of death and of dead bodies and we've and and all the mythologizing of dead bodies like she doesn't like the ideas of zombies because it's it's kind of perpetuating the the myth that dead bodies can be disease ridden and that kind of things and she blows apart all of that kind of stuff i found it really profoundly interesting this book and she's passionate about it and i was as passionate when i finished it and it's one of those books that i'm going to reread I'm going to reread because there, I think I missed some stuff and she talks about all the myths of death and, and, and her experience in the death industry and how she's become an alternative mortician. And it's just great. Caitlin Doherty, smoke gets in your eyes. Um, just really good. Really, really, really profoundly um, interesting and fascinating. And she's coming to the UK later in the year to um, give a keynote speech at a conference. And I don't know whether I can get tickets for the day because I would really like to hear her speak. And um, yeah, it was really fascinating, really fascinating. And it was interesting having gone through it recently, beside the pocket, I'll just keep an eye on the time quickly, but having gone through the process recently and how people reacted when they knew that I had sat with, with my mum, to me that was a natural experience, but for them they were, they were oh, you, you would do that. And it's like, well, yes that was my mum, you know, I came from her, you know, that, that body is extremely, extremely precious to me, and not frightening, there is, you know, that is a very beloved person to me, that was my beloved, so, um, yeah, it was really, a really good book for the, from that, and I think actually it was, it was positive that I did read it, so, anyway, I'm going off, going off on a tangent, different kind of book, different kind of book I read In the Woods by Tanner French which is a crime novel I, I I am capable of reading many different types of books as you well know this is the first in the Dublin Murder Squad series and it's the first Tanner um, French I have read I enjoyed it I found it a bit slow and the thing that really got me and I've got several other of the Dublin Murder Squad and I will continue and read them all because it they were good enough for that the main character I didn't find very likeable and oh it's you know adult women cartwheeling through snow it, it had that kind of that kind of pixie woman girl thing going on that I just find infuriating I just I, I just find it infuriating I don't get it I don't get it and there was lots of references to her kind of stretching and I don't know it just as soon as that happened that scene happened which was towards the beginning I just was like oh and I could see what the twist was and I mean it's a 600 page book and I could see what the twist was but I still you know it was still good and I would still recommend it and I think perhaps perhaps it was me not it but why why the the kind of adult women cartwheeling in the snow no, no. Do you see anybody else have that? Does anybody else have that kind of annoyance? Or is that is that a particularly me thing? Different yet again. Um Crazy for Books. Hello my darling. Um recommended Elizabeth Hunter to me as a vampire romance series. 
and um, this is the first one, Hidden Fire. Found it on the old Kindle for Neil Puan. So I was like, oh lovely, I'll have, I'll have a go at that as a freebie to seeing if I liked the series. So that's Hidden Fire, Elizabeth Hunter. Oh, I say, not, uh, it had a lot of kind of intrigue and, and, and nibbling. Um, it's one of the cleaner vampire romances, I would say. Um, and there's lots of death, and so there's kind of that, but they're kind of, you know, sexually, there's a lot of tension. <laughs> tension, obviously that's my sign for tension. Um, and uh, so much so, is um, I had to bear with, bear with, immediately after finishing, get to the second one, which is what I'm trying to get you the cover for here, which is called, oh, I should have organised this, do, do apologise, This Same Earth. So this is an elemental mysteries book and same chap with his can't do buttons. Must be a nightmare as a vampire. Rarely do they be able to seem to be able to do their buttons up. I'd help, I'd help. So yes, this same earth was the second one. I think there's quite there's quite a few books in the series if I'm if I'm right. But I, I the first two I have read and um, thoroughly enjoyed. More satisfying in the second book. Um, there was a lovely comment on Goodreads that she must have had she must have um, loins of steel. <laughs> <laughs> for how much she resists his allure but when it came when it came to the to the end it was satisfying satisfying so i recommend that if you want a good vampire um romance then um elizabeth hunter is the one to go for so thank you very much crazy lovely lady um i also another romance i read was a rogue by any other name by sarah mclean this is the first Rule of Scoundrels novel. It's a Regency romance. Or if you like any Regency romance or you like a bit of a saucy novel, this was a, a more saucy novel than the Elizabeth Hunter, which was the vampire one. Um, it's definitely more saucy. Um, it was very satisfying. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, this is like a day's read and it just, it, you know, oh, it's great. So, yeah, recommend that. Um, I had a go at Little Deaths by Emma Flint, which was um, long listed for the Bailey's Prize. This is a crime novel set in 1965. Um, two children go missing from a woman's apartment, or Ruth's apartment, who she's estranged from her husband. And she's seen as not really a very good mother because she drinks and she smokes one well, my jaw they all smoke um but she goes out with other men and she brings them back she's separated from her husband but she's seen as not the right kind of mother and it's about what happens um i'm really glad i read it i'm really glad it was long listed because otherwise i wouldn't have picked it up however i can it hasn't been shortlisted because the shortlist shortlist was announced yesterday, and this isn't on the shortlist. If I I think when I was lo looking at it, I didn't see this one. Um, I liked the premise, and I liked the exploration of her character and how she was viewed as not the right mother because she's she doesn't make any attempt to fit in with the stereotypical mother and all the sympathy goes to her her husband her estranged husband because you know he's having to deal with her and all the suspicion from the police is that it she's obviously done something to the children because she's not seen grieving she goes out dressed well with makeup she's not seen that nobody sees her grieving like they want to see her grieve and i thought that was very interesting and there have been definite times in the media where mothers are portrayed. I mean, the, the portrayal of mother, there is the very much a good mother, bad mother stereotype. And it was an interesting exploration of that. I think the actual crime itself, I did start, I did think whether, I wondered whether I could read it or not, because it was about deaths of children. And the boy is at a similar age to my son. And, and that would immediately mean I would find it difficult to read. But that was fine that was done really quickly but 
I don't know. It, it needed to be more shocking in some ways because that that is such a shocking thing, and I felt we were too focused on this idea of good mother, bad mother. To the to the detriment of the the other um, parts of the story, so it felt it felt incomplete in that respect. I'm still glad I enjoyed. I, I'm still glad I read it, and I did enjoy it. But it felt it didn't lack. It lacked nuance. I think that's what it was. Its idea was was it was really kind of obvious with its idea, and I wanted a more nuanced look at it, um, rather than the caricature that I feel it strayed into, is what I'd say. But the writing the writing was fine. Um, I you know it didn't blow me away, but I just yeah, it was fine. But I you know it was a good book. I, I read it pretty quickly. I enjoyed it when I was reading it. Um, but I felt it, it was too black and white. It needed to be more nuanced. We needed some shades of grey in there, and it, there weren't there weren't enough. There weren't enough for me. And then the last book I read this month was another vampire romance, Nalini Singh by a uh, Angel's Blood by N Nalini Singh, and this is the first in a Guild Hunters novel. Excuse me. And I thought there weren't that many in this. Having looked on Tinternet, yes, yes, this is the first of quite a long series. Um, I have already ordered number two and number three. Now, I enjoyed Elizabeth Hunter, and I will continue with that. But this, Vampire Angels and, and People Taking Their Clothes Off is basically what I would say with this. I thought it was great. I thought it was great. Silly, yes, but then it's vampires and angels and, and, and people taking their clothes off. I don't want a nuanced discussion about morality <laughs> in that book. Oh, no, no. In that one, nuance. In that one, I want... I know what I want. And Nalini heard me and said, here you are, my love. This is the book for you. It was great. Absolutely great. If you like that kind of thing. Very, very kind of, kind of, you know, saucy. In a good way. There was, it, it was silly though. I mean, you know, believe me when I say it's silly. I think somebody actually wrote a comment and said it's bonkers. It is completely bonkers. But I liked it. I liked it. I liked it so much. So yeah, so that was a, that ended the, the month on a high point. And there we go. I'm going to do my habitual where I try and put them all in a pile. I've, been a bit rash with my throwing away. There we go. There we go. That was it. That was my march. It was a good one. It was a good one. I've gone on a bit. I do apologise. I was trying to be quick. Didn't work, did it? Hello. I'll show you that way. There we go. Oh, hold that straight. There we go. That was my march wrap up. A good month in all. I'm doing quite well. I'm hoping to go through the um, next couple of videos. I'm hoping to do a tag video because I've been tagged on one or two videos. I'm hoping to do one or two of those in the next uh, couple of weeks and I'm going to have a look at my um, books that I'm doing for the Pop Sugar book challenge 2017 where they, you've got so many prompts and I'm going to see if I what books I've read so far and whether they fit in and what kind of books I would need to look at picking up soon so that's what I, I'm going to do um, and that's that I've got one or two other ideas as well and there we go can I also just say hello to all the people that have recently subscribed and um, have left messages to say hello, they're new, and it's just lovely. I had one person who said, always watch, but uh, a, a lurker. They re always watch, but rarely comment, and they're from Poland, and they said hello to me. And I just, it just, it, it made my day that you said that, so um, hello to you, and hello to everybody else. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Much love. Bye-bye. <laughs>